Tywin Lannister on the Game of Thrones TV show is seen as like an evil, rich puppet master who controls the world. It's kind of like how Kanye West thinks of Jewish people. But in the books, Tywin Lannister is based on a real king, King Edward I. And Tywin in the books is an evil, insecure, hypocritical monster who killed an entire house, destroyed guest rights to kill a 16-year-old Rob Stark, and he's still one of my favorite characters of all time. I, I love him. But I'll get to that other stuff later on in the video. But Tywin loves his image. He lives for the image of House Lannister. When he sees that his kids Jaime and Cersei aren't willing to go as far as Tywin to protect the image of House Lannister, Tywin sees them as disappointments. And Tyrion will secure the North, you will secure the Reach. No, I won't do it. Yes, you will. You're still fertile, you need to marry again and breed. I am Queen Regent, not some brood man. You're my daughter! You will do as I command and you will marry Loras Tyrell. And put an end to the disgusting rumors about you once and for all. Father, don't make me do it again, please. Not another word. My children. You disgraced the Lannister name for far too long. Yeah, Tywin sees his kids as disappointments like how parents of OnlyFans girls see their kids as disappointments in real life. The second one is justified though. But here's a crazy crazy fact that you need to know. The author of the books, George R.R. Martin, when he was writing Tywin Lannister's character, he took inspiration from the real King Edward I. Certainly the policies that Edward followed, Tywin would have approved of. I mean, this was a man who was known as Hammer of the Scots, the man who conquered Wales and brought it into his kingdom. They're both relentless in their pursuit of power, of authority, absolutely determined, but in a sense really frustrated by their own family and specifically by their children. I don't distrust you because you're a woman. I distrust you because you're not as smart as you think you are. Edward I, for all intents and purposes, was Tywin. Or Tywin is, for all intents and purposes, Edward I. Like Tywin Lannister, he was not above doing devious, the ends justify the means kind of things. Edward I is a king who does not think much of burning an entire town if he feels that they're rebellious against him. Now, not everything that King Edward did was written onto Tywin Lannister. For example, King Edward had like 16 children, this dude was like the Nick Cannon of his time. His sperm gotta be strong. But it's cool to know that George based Tywin off a real king, and it adds more depth to the books. But young Tywin, he had a really unique upbringing. His dad Titus was seen as like a pushover, people called Titus the toothless lion. Someone give this man some braces. But Titus was really just a pushover, people really didn't repay his money back, people always made jokes behind his back. And little Tywin was like, damn, my dad has a humiliation kink. And this made little Tywin really angry. He's like, I'll show them. I'll show all of them. And if you're someone who watched the Red Wedding episode, the Red Wedding episode is named uh, The Reigns of Castamere. It's the same name of the song that plays during the Red Wedding. And it's some really cool stuff. But the question is, what actually is the Reigns of Castamere? Well, some people think it's like a badass move that Tywin Lannister made, and I'll admit, Killing thousands of people because they didn't pay you tax money is pretty badass. Even Jamie Lannister said so himself. Kinda. When he summoned the Reigns and Tarbeks to Casterly Rock to answer for their crimes, they rose in revolt, exactly as he expected. Their defiance gave him a pretext to call his banners and ride for Tarbeck Hall and Castanier with an army behind him. He didn't even bother to inform my grandfather. The Rain brothers didn't have the men to defend the castle walls and retreated into their underground stronghold. From this relative safety, they offered terms to my father to avoid a long siege. My father didn't reply. Instead, he commanded that the mines be sealed with stone and soil until there was no way in and no way out. When that was completed, it took less than a day to dam the stream beside the castle and only two to divert it to the nearest mine entrance. The rains had taken more than 300 men, women and children into the mines. A few guards reported hearing faint screams and shouts below them one night, but come dawn, the earth was silent once again. And now the rain weeps over the halls, with no one left to hear. A house didn't pay tax, so they got flooded to death. Kind of sounds like Vancouver. But on the reload, this looks badass, but kind of did kind of ruin a lot. 
His dad Tyros literally told these houses that they don't need to repay the Lannisters, especially after what Tywin did to them. He literally held one of them hostage. So these people didn't do anything wrong to the Lannisters, all they were doing is listening to Tytos, the Lord of Casterly Rock. Which is something they were supposed to do. They weren't supposed to listen to Tywin who is his son. They are supposed to listen to the dad. But this is all really important to know because him seeing his father being laughed at, like Jaime said, Tywin seeing his dad have no shame at all really got to him. At first the Westerlands laughed with the laughing lion as the jovial Titus was called. But when men realized this lion had neither teeth nor claws, they started to laugh at him. When my grandfather broached the subject of repayment, Roger and Reynard only laughed. And soon enough, my grandfather was laughing along with them. Then my father Tywin returned from the War of the Nine Penny Kings, where he'd seen how the rest of the realm sniggered at House Lannister. Determined to restore our proper place, my father demanded the immediate repayment of all debts to the Rock, or a hostage from those who couldn't pay. Reynard Rain merely laughed when he received the Raven. Tywin being laughed at is where Tywin began a love and insecurity for House Lannister. And after this he wanted his house to be feared forever. And anything that stands in his way from Tywin's perspective is a goddamn Nazi and needs to be destroyed. But the problem is that the thing that ruined House Lannister's image was his third child, Tyrion Lannister. Tywin's wife died giving birth to Tyrion, which is something that lashed on to Tyrion's life for basically the rest of his life. And if you serve faithfully, you will be rewarded with a suitable wife. And I would let myself be consumed by maggots before mocking the family name and making you heir to Casterly Rock. Why? Why? You ask that? You who killed your mother to come into the world? You are an ill-made, spiteful little creature. Full of envy, lust, and low cunning. Men's laws give you the right to bear my name and display my colors, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. And to teach me humility, the gods have condemned me to what you waddle about. And Tywin saw Tyrion being a dwarf is basically like the ultimate reason to hate us on Tyrion. Which is sad because Tyrion basically is literally Tywin. It's like a goddamn copy and paste situation we got here. Literal plagiarism. But I'll get to that later on in the video. But because Tywin has such an evil reputation in Westeros, and when people heard that his son is a dwarf, people started saying that Tyrion is Tywin's punishment for all the bad things that Tywin has done in his life. He finally got punished, and Tyrion was the punishment. But Tywin was so insecure about this, and so insecure that Tyrion could ruin the perfect Lannister image that Tywin wanted people to think, he nearly killed his own baby after birth. When have you ever done something that wasn't in your interest, but solely for the benefit of the family? The day that you were born. I wanted to carry you into the sea and let the waves wash you away. Instead, I let you live. And I brought you up as my son. Because you're a Lannister. That's a real man right there. He wants credit because he didn't kill his baby son. That's like Jeffrey Epstein saying, hey, come on guys, I didn't I didn't rape all the kids, come on now. I only got freaky with some of them. I deserve a reward for being humble, don't I? And it's like, no motherfucker, you do not deserve credit for not drowning your own baby. And the scariest part is the son that Tywin always wanted. The son that he had the ability to walk in Tywin's political footsteps, his intelligence and stepping up, was Tyrion. Tyrion was literally Tywin writ small. You, you are no, no son of mine. Now that's where you're wrong, father. Why, I believe I'm you writ small. But Tywin hated Tyrion because Tyrion was literally Tywin in the open. The skeletons that Tywin had in his closet, Tyrion would just walk with them. Tyrion is insecure but tries to be confident. Tywin is also insecure but he pretends to be confident. Tywin loves being looked at with respect and being needed. And Tyrion in Book 2 also loved that he was the only reason why King's Landing wasn't destroyed by the reign of Joffrey. 
But most importantly, Tyrion is a freak in the sheets and is filled with lust and he's not ashamed of it. And Tywin is the same. We find out in Tywin's last chapter where he's alive, that he was sleeping with Tyrion's main chick Shay. And Tywin most likely had many other girls throughout the tunnels of King's Landing. But for some reason he is Tyrion for it because he hangs out with whores? When Tywin hangs out with whores it's totally fine, but when Tyrion does it it's apparently a problem. But neither gods nor men will ever compel me to let you turn castily rock into your whorehouse. Now one more thing. The next whore I cut in your bed I'll hang. And this wasn't where it ended. When Tyrion was 16 he did something that really pissed off Tywin. And this was when we really got to see the horrible monster that Tywin Lannister truly is. Tyrion, just like most NBA players, he married a whore. Which there's nothing wrong with that, but Tywin had a hard time with this. And he found it as like a disgrace to House Lannister. So Tywin made Jaime tell Tyrion that Jaime stays the whole thing. The entire thing was fake. It was like a Saturday Night Live sketch. And that Tysha was a whore. But here's the thing. All of this was real, and it gets revealed later on that Tysha was never a whore. All of that was real. But this wouldn't stop Tywin. So Tywin made his Lannister guards. S.A. Taisha and made Tyrion watch. Girl was a whore, you see. Jamie had arranged the whole thing. The road, the rapers, all of it. He thought it was time I had a woman. And after my brother confessed, my father brought in my wife and gave her to his guards. He paid her well. Silver for each man. How many whores command that kind of price? He brought me into the barracks and made me watch. By the end, she had so much silver that the coins were slipping through her fingers and rolling onto the floor. I would have killed the man who did that to me. And in the books it's even worse because Tywin made Tyrion also essay Taisha in the end. To show him that House Lannister coins are worth more. Like really insecure disturbing stuff. I don't know how George comes up with this stuff man. But something that is also really disturbing is the Red Wedding. And this is what really shows that Tywin is really insecure. And he's insecure because he's losing the war against a 16 year old Robb Stark. And he would have nearly lost. This scene happens a little differently in the Game of Thrones TV show. In the TV show Robb Stark is talking about his men and the mountain. But in the books. He's talking about Tywin and how Robb Stark had a perfect trap laid out for Tywin and Edmure Tully screwed it up. So I'm gonna play this scene from the show but remember whenever Robb Stark says the mountain replace that with Tywin Lannister. It's not about glory. Your instructions were to wait for him to come to you. I seized an opportunity. What value was the mill? The mountain was garrisoned across the river from it. Is he there now? Of course not. We took the fight to him. He could not withstand us. I wanted to draw the mountain into the west. Into our country where we could surround him and kill him. I wanted him to chase us. Which he would have done because he is a mad dog without a strategic thought in his head. I could have that head on a spike by now. Instead I have a mill. So Tywin, who is supposed to be this military genius, he nearly got his ass whooped and killed by a 16 year old Robb Stark. And he would have died if Robb Stark was just vocal about a secret plan to Edmure Tully. But this scared off Tywin. And so Tywin made it back to King's Landing in time to stop Stannis with the Tyrell army. And this was when Tywin started preparing the Red Wedding. The Red Wedding in the books is even crazier. But here's the craziest thing. In the books, you can't break guest rights. So Catelyn wanted to eat Walder Frey's food as quickly as she can because if she eats with him he can't kill her or betray her because she is now under guest rights. But nope. In order for Tywin to defeat Robb Stark he needed to hit below the belt and break guest rights. Short term this was good. In fact short term this was actually like really really good. They help him get rid of Robb Stark and he makes them the lords of the Riverlands. Everybody in the agreement wins. Tywin knows that the river lords have always looked down on the phrase, so he uses that to his advantage and for his own interests. 
He makes an alliance with the Freys to satisfy all the Freys' ego and he also gets rid of a dangerous enemy cheaply and quickly. In exchange, the Freys get to keep the Riverlands but swear their fealties to Joffrey. And the Lannisters still have influence over the region thanks to Tywin's sister, Jenna, being married into that house. Everybody wins in the situation. But long term, all they did was make people look at Tywin like a coward. And Tywin ruined the House Lannister from the inside. When Tywin dies, House Lannister is essentially no more. Tyrion has gone to Essos, Tywin is dead, Cersei is completely paranoid, and Jaime is like, damn, maybe having intercourse with my house sister wasn't the move. So it's truly crazy that when Tyrion shot that crossbow against Tywin, Tyrion basically killed House Lannister, but Tywin basically made Tyrion do it. So even though when Tywin dies, Tywin thinks he was right about Tyrion being the end of House Lannister, it's technically Tywin who was the end of House Lannister. This is even more funny because Tyrion might be the son of the Mad King Ares, the same king that Tywin betrayed after Robert's rebellion and sacked the city. But if Tyrion is King Ares' son, that means King Ares basically had the last laugh against Tywin. But either way, Tywin's insecurities, hypocrisy, and rootlessness destroyed House Lannister. And Tyrion only really just played kill confirmed like it was a Call of Duty match. But the stink that filled the privy gave ample evidence that the oft-repeated jape about his father was just another lie. Lord Tywin Lannister did not, in the end, shit gold. But yeah, I have plenty more videos coming out. And yeah, this is obviously inspired by Allshift X video on Tyrion and Jon, so shout out to him. And yeah, like, subscribe, and peace, peace.